Okay, we're back. We're talking about the word no. Page 73 in the Boundaries book. The word no, the one word boundary. Toddlers going through reproachment frequently use one of the most important words in the human language, the word no. While it can emerge during hatching, no is perfected during reproachment. It's the first verbal boundary children learn. The word no helps children separate from what they don't like. It gives them the power to make choices. It protects them. Learning to deal with a child's no is crucial to the child's development. One couple who didn't attend to their child's refusal to eat certain foods found out later that she was allergic to one of them. Often children at this stage become no addicts. They will not only refuse vegetables in nap time, but also turn away from popsicles and favorite toys. It's worth it for them to have the no. It keeps them from feeling completely helpless and powerless. Parents have two tasks associated with no. First, they need to help their child feel safe enough to say no, thereby encouraging his or her own boundaries. Though they certainly can't make all the choices they'd like, young children should be able to have a no that is listened to. Informed parents won't be insulted or enraged by their child's resistance. This will help the child feel that his no is just as lovable as his yes. They won't withdraw emotionally from the child who says no, but they will stay connected. One parent must often support another who is being burned, worn down by the baby's no. This process takes work. <laughs> One couple was faced with an aunt whose feelings were hurt by the, their daughter's refusal to kiss or hug her upon every visit. Sometimes the child wanted to be close. Sometimes she wanted to stand back and watch. The couple responded to the aunt's complaint by saying, we don't want Casey to feel that her affection is something she owes people. We'd like her to be in charge of her life. These parents wanted their daughter's yes to be yes and her no to be no. Matthew 5, 37. They wanted her to be able to say no so that in the future she would have the ability to say no to evil. The second task, wow, I mean, just sitting with that is incredible. I'm, I'm just thinking how many times did I like not respect my son's no and like even disciplined him for saying no? Um, what would have happened if I had respected that? And, and I'm not talking about like in every instance, but we're going to get to healthy consequences uh, for behavior and stuff like that. But when it comes to showing affection to somebody or not, um, I think the authors give a great example that that is a clear area to allow your child to choose for themselves who they will hug or kiss and who they won't. Um, so important. So I just wanted to sit with that for a sec. Okay. The second task facing parents of children in reproachment is that of helping the child respect others' boundaries. Children need to be able not only to give a no, but also to take a no. Parents need to be able to set and keep age appropriate boundaries with children. It means not giving in to temper tantrums at the toy shop, though it would be less humiliating to quiet the child by purchasing half of the store. It means timeouts, appropriate confrontations, and spanking when necessary. Quote, discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. It's Proverbs 19:18. In other words, help children learn to take limits before it's too late. Boundary construction is most evident in three-year-olds. By this time, they should have mastered the following tasks. Number one, the ability to be emotionally attached to others, yet without giving up a sense of self or one's freedom to be apart. Number two, the ability to say appropriate no's to others without fear of loss of love. And number three, the ability to take appropriate notes from others without withdrawing emotionally. Noting these tasks, a friend said half joking, they need to learn this by age three? How about age 43? <laughs> yes, these are tall orders, but boundary development is essential in the early years of life. Two additional periods of life focus on boundaries. The first is adolescence. The adolescent years are a reenactment of the first years of life. They involve more mature issues such as sexuality, gender identity, competition, and adult identity. But the same issues of knowing when to say yes and no and to whom are central during these confusing times. <sighs> or during this confusing time. 
The second period is young adulthood, the time when children leave home or college and start a career or get married. Young adults suffer a loss of structure during this period. There are no class bells, no schedules imposed by others, and a great deal of very scary freedom and responsibility, as well as the demands of intimacy and commitment. This can often become an intense time of learning more about setting good boundaries. And I truly hope that anybody who's thinking about getting married or who's engaged will take the time to go through this book and the workbook, which is so in depth. I, I truly wish every church offered this course and um, it's not hard to, it's not a hard course to get. There's a nine week online DVD teaching session. So all you have to do is show up and provide a safe space to talk about this stuff. And it could be such a great tool for um, young adults. Well, really for anyone at any age. So that's my plug for boundaries, groups, and churches. All right. Um, let's see. The earlier the child learns good boundaries, the less turmoil he or she experiences in life. A successful first three years of life will mean a smoother but not smooth adolescence and a better transition into adulthood. A problematic childhood can be helped greatly by lots of hard work in the family during adolescence. But serious boundary problems during both these periods can be devastating during the adult years. It helps to know the way it should have been for me, said one woman who attended a talk on child development. But what would really help is to know what went wrong for me. Let's look next at where our boundary development goes wrong. Boundary injuries, what goes wrong? I'm going to stop the video here and start again on another section. Thanks for joining. See you in a minute.